he told me I love this. This actually didn't make it into the final copy of the story. I might do a follow up on it. When he was in on the CFL team, he went to the quarterbacks coach, not cornerback, quarterback, as in throwing the ball. And he mm-hmm. said, like, hey, can I sit in on y'all's meetings so that I can get a better sense of uh, what you're doing and what you're thinking? And they're like, no. And so he went and he talked to Chad Kelly, who was the starting quarterback at the time, and like talked ball with him. And then he went and talked to Cameron Dukes, Chad's backup at the time, now the starter for the Argos, and talked about it with him. And again, I was in the Cowboys locker room for seven years. Now I'm jumping around different teams. I've seen quarterbacks sit in offensive line rooms. I've seen quarterbacks pick the defensive coordinator's brain or a defensive coach. I don't remember a time I've seen a DB pick the quarterback's brain consistently. I'm not saying no one ever asked a question, but that's just not typically how they're wired. It's like, how can I go to my craft? And so when you put all that together, I mean, he told me, like, I plan once. He's like, I need to get a little more crap before I start asking Aaron questions. But I do want to ask Aaron how he sees the game. And Aaron really sees the game at an extremely high level, as we all know. And so I think that when you take his ability to overcome things and his determination to not just work hard, but also avail himself of all the resources in a way a lot of players and especially rookies or first year players in the NFL probably wouldn't. I think that's what convinces coaches that this guy's going to make it. And as his agent told me over and over again, like this is not just a, a storybook. This is not just a fairy tale. Like this is a guy who can actually play and actually contribute.